Hi, I'm Dr. Mrinalini Sharma. I'm a plastic and cosmetic surgeon practicing in East River Cosmetic Clinic, Saket. Today we're going to be talking about rhinoplasty, more popularly known as a nose job. It is becoming an increasingly popular procedure both among men and women. So today I'm going to be telling you the 10 major things you need to know before you contemplate a rhinoplasty. The first thing which you need to understand is that it is one of the most difficult of all cosmetic surgery procedures. It requires a great deal of planning and expertise on the part of the surgeon. So, choosing a good surgeon is the first step towards a rhinoplasty procedure. It is not a surgery which can give you a lot of room for modification once the initial surgery goes wrong. That is why always look for a surgeon who has a decent experience in this field and can show you images of his previous patients and the results which he or she has achieved via the procedure. It requires a lot of artistic planning on the part of the surgeon and also realistic expectations on the part of the patient to achieve a nose which will go with the patient's face and yield a satisfactory result at the end of the procedure. It's not a procedure which can be uh, copy pasted from a book and lifted onto the patient's nose. So the Im improvement is very uh, customized to the individual patient and uh, a lot of finer modifications, a lot of finesse is required to yield a nose which goes well with the patient's face. That is why uh, once you're looking for a rhinoplasty procedure, search for a surgeon who has all these uh, criteria and can deliver the desired results in the first surgery itself that is in the primary rhinoplasty. So the most important part of any rhinoplasty procedure is the consultation. In this uh, we get to know what the patient desires. So the patient might have issues like say a crooked nose or a tip which is too bulbous, nostrils which are too flared or uh, say a dorsal hump. So whatever the patient desires is to be conveyed to the surgeon in this first meeting. Uh, we are also going to get to know what is the, your expectation from the procedure and what can be realistically delivered. So during this consult, we would ideally like the patient to provide us some images of what he or she wants the outcome to be like. And we can assess whether that is actually possible considering the patient's inherent nasal features like the thickness of the skin, the available cartilages and the kind of modifications required. Also very important is to understand whether all these modifications will actually end up suiting the patient's face. So for this we can use a software which can give a fair enough simulation of the expected result. Or the patient can provide us with some images which he or she uh, finds ideal, ideally suited to their face. Uh, at this point of time, I would like to emphasize that uh, though the software really helps us in simulation, it is a little different at times from what the expected outcomes can be. So we have to be realistic because a software can probably just about produce any change desired. But what ultimately is achievable uh, depends to a large extent upon how the patient's inherent uh, cartilage or skin is. Also, the patient should understand that the aim of rhinoplasty is not to give you somebody else's nose, but to give you a better version of your own nose. So the first and most important step in a successful rhinoplasty is a consult in which the patient's expectations and the doctor's expertise and opinion merge towards achieving a realistic and beautiful outcome. The nose occupies a central position in any, anybody's face. So any improvement in the structure of the nose or in the cosmesis of the nose greatly increases the overall facial aesthetics. However, having said that, rhinoplasty is not always a cosmetic procedure. At times, there are certain medical issues also which are addressed by rhinoplasty. For example, a patient might have had breathing problems because of a deviated septum or the central partition which uh, divides the nose into two chambers. So a crooked septum can lead to breathing problems and also cause problems like sinusitis. So in this case, a septoplasty as it is called combined with an aesthetic rhinoplasty will not only improve how the nose looks like but also take away the breathing problems or at least improve them to a great extent. An important aspect of the rhinoplasty consult 
is the assessment of the patient's inherent nasal features. So most of our Indian patients tend to have weaker cartilages and thicker skins compared to the Caucasian population. So hence, the planning and the execution of a surgery in the Indian subset is a little different from the Caucasian subset. We also need additional sources of cartilage to augment the existing nasal framework. This might be taken from the ear, which is called a conical cartilage. Or in some cases, we might need to take off a piece of the rib cartilage, which is also called the costal cartilage. So essentially, we're trying to create a framework using these structures and trying to supplement the weak cartilages which are inherently present in the nose so that we build up a nice framework over which the skin can be draped and give the person a stronger, more defined nose. Having said that, some features need to be taken into consideration in the consult itself. Like for example, if the patient has chronic acne or has chronic sinusitis, then the overlying skin can be significantly thickened. Such patient becomes a less than ideal candidate for a rhinoplasty, especially in terms of certain aspects like tip definition. That is why the patient needs to be counseled in the consult itself regarding maybe a little difference in the outcome from what was initially planned to what is actually achieved on table. And only when the patient and the surgeon deem that the expected result is up to the patient's desires, we should go ahead for a surgery. Rhinoplasty in 90% of cases is performed under general anesthesia. It is a day care procedure in which the patient comes to us early in the morning. The surgical duration might range from anything between 2 to 4 hours depending upon the type of rhinoplasty and the extent of correction required. After that, the patient stays with us for about 4-5 hours and is ready to go home. There are very few cases in which it can be performed under local anesthesia. For example, if we just have to correct something as minimal as nostril flaring, then this can be done under local anesthesia also. Some very degree, uh, some very minor degree of tip improvement can also be carried out under local anesthesia. But barring these two exceptions, almost all rhinoplasty is a procedure done under general anesthesia. So uh, there are two kinds of rhinoplasty: the open rhinoplasty which is the more commonly performed procedure and the closed rhinoplasty, which is done exclusively when we don't have to do a lot of tip work. So the surgeon decides whether the patient requires an open rhinoplasty or a closed rhinoplasty. Prior to the surgery, the patient needs to follow certain preoperative instructions. So if the patient is a smoker, then smoking is a strict no-no at least one week pre and two weeks post surgery. If the patient uh, is on any health supplements, he should inform his doctor. Anything like green tea, vitamin E, fish oil capsules and other blood thinners are to be stopped one week prior to the surgery. Also in the post-operative period, these uh, substances are to be abstained from to ensure a rapid healing and a quick resolution of the swelling post a rhinoplasty. In the post-operative period, the patient's nose is blocked by nasal packing for 24 to 48 hours, depending upon the extent of surgery. This might be a little uncomfortable for the patient, but uh, the patient has to understand that this is a very essential part of the procedure so that the patient does not experience any bleeding in the post-operative post period. This is essentially the most difficult part of the rhinoplasty procedure for most of the patients. As such, it is not really a painful procedure and very simple painkillers are more often than not adequate to take care of the post-operative pain. If we have gone to say the rib cartilage for additional cartilage harvest, then the rib might hurt the patient for a period of about 10 days, but does not cause any long term problems and the patient can very well perform all the activities which he or she was performing before the rhinoplasty procedure in a matter of about 6 weeks. So most of the patients will require painkillers and antibiotics just for about 5 to 7 days post the rhinoplasty procedure. Also, if you have performed osteotomies to narrow the nose, which is essentially a fracture of the nasal bones, the patient might experience some amount of post-operative swelling and bruising around the eyes. Again, nothing to panic. This is all temporary and in most patients resolves within the first five to seven days itself. So at this time, the patient is used to, is advised to use ice packs and also probably sleep with two pillows. That is, have a little bit of head elevation, which brings the swelling down faster. 
Overall, after the pack is removed, patients are quite comfortable with the rhinoplasty procedure and many of them also return to work even with the splints on. Uh, more so these days because most of work, the work is online and patients have gone back to their work within the first week itself. Certain things need to be taken care of in the post-operative period uh, to ensure a quicker recovery. Number one, we should avoid all form of exercises. So no gymming, no weight training for a period of six weeks. The patient is advised to go for walks at about three weeks. Uh, cardio can be resumed at about four weeks, starting with a mild intensity and gradually adding on, depending upon the comfort of the patient. Weight training, as I said, should be a complete no-no for the first, first six weeks. Also, if the patient wears glasses, then he or she has to shift to lenses for a few days so that the rim of the glass does not cause an indentation in the newly framed nasal framework. So another very important thing which the patient should understand when he is contemplating a rhinoplasty procedure is that rhinoplasty will always have a good amount of swelling in the initial six months or so. So certain aspects like the tip definition can be achieved only after this initial period of swelling goes away. It is very important to understand that Indian skin is much thicker than Caucasian skin. So the kind of results you were expecting would take a longer time to be visible. So final results are in fact achieved at about one and a half years after the initial rhinoplasty. Socially acceptable uh, re results would take again about 10 days to one month depending upon the extent of rhinoplasty. So I would say that do not plan a rhinoplasty if you have some big event coming up in the next one month or six weeks. Always have ample gap between such an important social event and your planned rhinoplasty procedure. A popular form of rhinoplasty these days is the non-surgical rhinoplasty, also called a liquid rhinoplasty. This essentially involves the use of fillers to address some of the nasal issues. So for example, a patient has a low nasal dorsum or is not happy with the projection of his tip or the projection of his nasal bridge, the dermal fillers can be used to correct the, these problems. The advantages is that it is an office procedure, it does not require any surgery, the downtime is minimal, the discomfort is minimal and the patient is ready to return to his work schedule in a matter of hours or maximum a day. The flip side is this cannot deal with all the problems which the patient might have in his nose. So for example, if you have a very broad nasal dorsum and which needs narrowing, dermal fillers are not really the best option. Also say somebody has flared nostrils or somebody has a very bulbous tip. So these can't be really corrected to that extent as is possible in a formal rhinoplasty. So yes, if a patient is looking for a quick fix, looking for something minor, then dermal fillers are a good option and can probably give some amount of correction. But if you're looking for any major changes in your nose or if you have problems like a deviated nose or you require a septal correction or you require a tip refinement, then it is better to go in for the surgical rhinoplasty. Another problem which fillers can cause sometimes is migration of the filler or in very rare cases some kind of interference with the blood supply of the nose. A word of caution here, never leave your nose in the hands of an untrained person. Always, always choose a plastic surgeon who has a good working knowledge of the anatomy of the nose and is sure to put the fillers in the right place. Else we can have problems which become lifelong complications and cannot be really managed easily and can lead to bad and permanent deformities. If you've been contemplating a rhinoplasty procedure for a long time, I guess this is the right time to go in for it. With the work from home option being available, the transition from the surgery to return to work is going to be very smooth. If you have any further queries regarding this procedure, please feel free to reach out to us to, with the details mentioned below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel for further updates. Thank you.